Okay. We need to finish example four from the notes from yesterday. And I kind of got us back about where we were. I think I backed it up a little bit to figure this out. This does go with 31 to 36 in the homework problems. Okay, so FYI, this goes with 31 through 36. And I think what we will probably do, after, you know, I'll go through this one, and then we can probably go and look at one of those to give us an idea of what we're looking at there. Okay? Now, review. Okay? So we're being asked to find sine of 3 pi over 8. When we find sine of 3 pi over 8, it says to use half angle identities, right? Well, the half angle identity is sine of u over 2, correct? And so what you're thinking here is, and what I tried to show here is, okay, we need, okay, how does 3 pi over 8 equal u over 2? So thinking of this question mark right here, this is u is what this is. So how does something divided by 2 equal 3 pi over 8? I kind of changed how I had this written out for yesterday, but that's the idea. And so if something divided by 2 equals 3 pi over 8, then we're going to multiply by 2. We did this yesterday. 3 pi over 8 times 2 is 6 pi over 8, which is 3 pi over 4. And so that 3 pi over 4 goes in place of u. So now what we're doing, it's sine of u over 2, right? In our notes, the half angle identity is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine u over 2. Except what are we using in place of u? 3 pi over 4. Okay, um, we probably talked yesterday, but we're going to talk again. Plus or minus? 3 pi over 8 is in quadrant 1. And my brain says it's in quadrant 1 because 3 pi over 8 is a little bit below 4 pi over 8, right? And 4 pi over 8 is pi over 2. So I know that, yes, this is quadrant 1. Since this is quadrant one, this is going to be a positive square root, right? One minus. Okay, where'd my unit circle go? Buried in my pile of stuff here. Cosine of three pi over four. Well, three pi over four is in quadrant two. What is three pi over four equivalent to in quadrant one? 3 pi over 4 is equivalent to pi over 4 in quadrant 1. So what you're asking yourself is what is the cosine of pi over 4 but with the appropriate positive or negative sign in quadrant from quadrant 2? So what is the cosine of pi over 4? Square root of 2 over 2. But we're really talking about 3 pi over 4, which is over here in quadrant 2. What do you know about cosine in quadrant 2? All students. So cosine is negative. So this is really 1 minus the negative square root of 2 over 2, all over 2. No, I mean, it's going to become plus here momentarily. Okay. Yep. Nope. I just... I feel like I have to, at this beginning stage, write it as minus a negative first to make sure everyone sees it. But then, exactly, what do we know about minus a negative? It is plus a positive. Okay? Now, a couple of different ways, and I kind of changed this up from past years of how I simplified. We need to simplify this, right? We can't leave fraction within fraction, all under a radical. Like, this is just ugliness. The other day, in a previous lesson, we talked about dealing with fractions within fractions, right? How do we deal, is when we are simplifying the tangent sum and difference identities. How do we deal with fractions within fractions? There's a denominator, this denominator right here, right, of 2. We need that denominator of 2 gone. If it's divided by 2, we want to multiply by 2. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply the numerator by 2. If you multiply the numerator of a fraction by 2, we multiply the denominator by 2. 
And we're multiplying by 2 over 2, which is just 1. So I haven't changed the value. I'm just multiplying by 1. Are we okay with what I'm doing? Okay. So carrying down, square root. Now, officially, this 2 has to, on top, it has to distribute, correct? 2 times 1 is 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 times 2. Or if you prefer, you need to think of these as 2 over 1. Square root, over, square root of 2 over 2 times 2 over 1. The 2's will cancel and we have square root of 2 all over. 2 times 2 is 4. I would go one more step before stopping. Square root the denominator. Okay. Square root of 2 underneath an already square root. I can't do anything about that. It's not pretty, but I can't do anything about it. It's not going to make it any prettier. I see. So since this is divided, well, since this is divided by four, you'd be multiplying by one over four, and so you're still going to have fractions. Can't you just do two plus the square root of two? Like, and keep all that on the top as in a square root, and then have it just put in the bottom because four is the square root of four. I am getting ready to take the square root of four. I am getting ready to do that. On top, the 2 plus square root of 2 is just going to stay as is because I can't add those. So what I am going to do is on top, this is just going to stay the not pretty of square root of 2 plus square root of 2. However, on the bottom, the square root of 4 is 2, and this would be one possible answer. But wouldn't the square root of a square root shouldn't that just cancel that out? That's no. It. That's when you do a square root times a square root. If I do the square root of 2 and the square root of 2 again, it just makes it even smaller. But it's not, it's the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. So no, there's no simplifying that. Now, I'm fine with this answer. I need to throw the or in there, though. And... The or, the way the book shows it, is they take that denominator of 2 and put it out front. If I take that denominator of 2 and put it out front, I'm going to put it out front as 1 half times the square root of 2 plus square root of 2. Just be aware. Those are perfectly equivalent. Neither one is more right or more wrong than the other. I shouldn't say more wrong because they're not wrong. Neither of them is more correct than the other. Better? Okay. Now, my original plan was to stop here and end the recording. However, for the benefit of those apps, I think I'm going to continue my recording because they're going to need help too, right? Now, this one we just did pairs with 31 through 36. What do you think? Well, this one's fresh in our mind, so we go attempt one of those. You wanted the uh, degrees ones. Okay. And the degrees is no different. Those confuse me. But don't let them confuse you. Okay, so the request is one of the degrees ones. Um, it's all right. How about, about 32? Yeah. 32? Tangent of 195 degrees, right? And the directions on 31 through 36 use half angle identities to find an exact value without a calculus. So for a half angle identity, we want this to be tangent of 
u divided by 2. Yes? Except we need to find what u is. So right here, this is tangent of u divided by 2. Now, the idea here, notice guys, I need, if this is an equivalent statement, I need 195 to be equal to u divided by 2. So this is the best way I can think to explain is I want this u divided by 2 to equal 195 degrees. The notes example is in radians, right? This is degrees. It's still the same math concept, though. If something divided by 2 equals 195, what is that something? What do we need to do here? We need to take 195 and multiply it by 2, and we get 390. So right here is my 309. Yes? You can do this all wrong because I was thinking about the one like, I, I said like tan of the tan. I did the one thing where we like went from the axis. Do you remember when we did that? The reference angles yeah, where you're, I yeah. I was doing that, like trying to get it to. It's so like how far is 195 from, the, yeah, no. Okay. I got all those wrong. <laughs> Okay, well, good news. We're going through them, so you get to fix, right? We get to learn from our mistakes, but... Okay, so this is what we're doing here. Because, and notice, guys, right here, 195, this is the same as 390 divided by 2, isn't it? So I have not... I've written an equivalent statement. I have not changed my statement. I've written an equivalent statement. Now, what's our tangent half-angle identity? Okay, so sine u, what's u? 390 over 1 plus cosine u, what's u? 390. This is how you're going to do all of these in this section, right? Now, we have to figure out the sine of 390. What do your brains think when you hear 390? Okay, it's bigger than 360. So I need to subtract 360. If something is bigger than 360, you can subtract 360. If something is negative, you can add 360, right? And, I mean, you can do a visual here, too. If I'm at 390, what's that? So right here is 360. Where am I going to end up? We're going to end up right here, aren't I? At, what is it? 390 minus 360 is 30 degrees. I did sign of 390. Maybe it's just a coincidence. I'm trying to figure out. Because 195 wouldn't be 30 from the axis, though. I did, so like I did like 15 from 180, right? Okay. So then I had 10 of 15. And then I multiplied oh. that by, it got oh, okay. 30. Okay. Okay. We'll see if it works in the other one. I was going to say, and that's the thing, it's going to work in this one. I'm trying to process if that would always work. Maybe, maybe not. I think it would work. It just might throw off your plus or minus signs. That's where I feel like it's going to throw you off. So, okay. So basically, instead of 390, 390 is equivalent to 30 degrees. So I'm going to do sine of 30 over 1 plus cosine of 30. Okay. What's the sine of 30? one-half over one plus, what's cosine of 30? Square root of 3 over 2. What's the, it just comes down to this point cleanup. 
This is not a good form to leave it in for multiple reasons. What's the skill we've been using? Multiply it by two. Okay, I have fractions within fractions. Yuck. So to get rid of a denominator of two on top, you multiply it by two. You do that on top, we do that on bottom. And I can do this because I'm multiplying by two over two, which is one. I keep repeating that. On top, one half times two is uno. On bottom, officially you need to distribute. Two times one is two plus two times square root of three over two. Two is cancel and you have square root of three. Again, just like Latin lesson five three, the answer key is not going to stop here. Not reciprocal. Give me a different vocab word. Conjugate. Just because you said reciprocal, you might still know what you mean in your head. You likely do. But, okay, because I can't leave a radical in the denominator, we're rationalizing. If it's 2 plus square root of 3, I'm going to multiply by 2 minus square root of 3. As always, what we do in the numerator, we do in the denominator. No, this section's been, this whole chapter's been rationalizing. You can leave a radical in the numerator. Okay. You just can't leave a radical in the denominator. Okay. Top is okay. 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 Speaking of the top, the top's easy to multiply, right? 1 times 2 minus square root of 3 is just going to be 2 minus square root of 3. On bottom, I need to foil. 2 times 2 is 4. These are conjugates, so I tend to kind of not write down the middles. 2 times negative square root of 3 is going to be negative 2 square root of 3. Square root of 3 times 2 is going to be positive square, 2 square root of 3, so those are going to cancel. What about square root of 3 times negative square root of 3? Minus 3. Okay. On top, I have 2 minus square root of 3. On bottom, what is 4 minus 3? 1. And so the answer key will have this as 2 minus square root of 3. You don't need to write a denominator of 1 unnecessarily. Okay. My recommendation, because I want to make sure we get one from each of the other two sections, because I know there's some issues. My recommendation is that you, maybe you figured this section out and you're okay, but if you struggle, which I know a bunch of you did, go back and work on figuring out the rest of 31 through 36, okay? Now, um, let's see, bottom section, top section. Either or, you guys want me to go to the top section or bottom section? Top section? Okay, so top section, 11 and 12 were piece of cake, if you realized it. Mm -hmm. And if not, I will help you figure it out when we do 13 or 14. Does it matter if I pick 13 or 14? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just go for 13. Because, um, yeah, let's just say I plan to talk about this because there's definitely a huge catch. Sine of 2 theta plus cosine of 3 theta, correct? <clears throat> okay. As we look at this one, the directions ask us to rewrite the expression as one only involving sine theta and cosine theta. So the gist of what we're saying here is we can't have a 2 theta, we can't have a 3 theta. We can only have one theta. Now, we can have sines and cosines, so we can have sine squareds, cosine squareds, cubes. We can have powers. Oh, 
You can have powers. You can't get away with this without powers. But you can only, your variable inside is only a theta. No two thetas or three thetas. I just didn't know when it was over. Like, when was I yeah. done? Well, the catch here is the three theta. Okay. So, on 11 and 12, you just had two theta at most, right? Mm -hmm. So, sine of two theta. What do we know about sine of two theta? Okay, it is one of our double angle identities. And so from my double angle identities, I'm going to take sine of 2 theta and I'm going to replace it with 2 sine theta cosine theta. And that part of the problem is done. Okay, and on 11 and 12, that's all you have to do. You replace and you're done. Okay, now the catch. Cosine 3 theta. Do we have an identity for cosine 3 theta? No. No, we do not. So that's the problem. We need to go back to lesson 5.3 and use one of those identities. Lesson 5.3 was our sum and difference identities. Okay, so what do you know about 3 theta? What plus what? Could add to be 3 theta. 2 theta plus 1 theta. Is that, is that equivalent? Because I'm leading us towards a lesson 5.3 identity, or sum and difference identities. Because we don't have an identity that just makes the 3 disappear. <coughs> We're going to have to use one of our identities or sum and difference identities to get there. So what I just did is I said, okay, 3, 3 theta is equivalent to 2 theta plus 1 theta. And I did that because we can now use the sum and difference of cosine identity. Remember that? Now, because I don't want to forget it, this 2 sine theta cosine theta is just carrying it carrying down plus. Okay. How does that cosine identity start? Cosine of a sum or difference. It's cosine cosine, right? You know which one I'm talking about? So it's cosine cosine, cosine x, cosine y. So in this case, cosine 2 theta, cosine 1 theta. Do I use the plus sign or do I change the plus sign? Where you change it, right? Cosine is the one you change it, yep. Minus, and then it's sine x sine y. So sine 2 theta, sine 1 theta. Now, I know it doesn't seem like it, but we have made progress. I don't have any three thetas left. However, I do have some two thetas back, don't I? Because here's the deal, guys. This three theta, we change to two theta plus one theta. I can't stop here, though, because I've got two thetas. But do we have identities for, two, for sine two theta and cosine two theta? We do, don't we? I told you, 13, 14, there's tricks. Okay. So, okay, my original 2 sine theta, cosine theta, I'm just copying it down because I don't want to lose it, don't want to forget it. So 2 sine theta, cosine theta, plus cosine 2 theta. Go to your identities. What do we know about cosine 2 theta? Cosine squared u minus sine squared u. Okay, cosine squared u minus sine squared u. Technically, you can use any of the three. And they're all plus the problem. There's two different answers as possibilities, so it's either way you simplify to one answer or the other. Okay? I'm just going to go with 
this is going to replace to be the cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now, what do we also have here? Don't forget, it's still being multiplied by cosine theta. So I replaced cosine 2 theta with cosine squared minus sine squared theta and just brought down my cosine theta. Because after this step, we just, we're going to have some cleanup to do. Minus. What do we know about sine 2 theta? The identity says 2 sine theta cosine theta. So this right here just got replaced. And then what else are we going to do? Don't forget to carry down the times sine theta. Good news. Do I have only thetas left? We have some squareds there, but remember I said squareds are okay. We just have one thetas. Oh, it's clean up time. So it's two sine cosine. Is that all one term? Two sine cosine is one term. No. Because this two sine cosine is multiplied by sine. We are going to look for like terms, but I need to take a multiplying step first. Then we're going to look for like terms. Okay, so this initial 2 sine theta, cosine theta out front, guess what? For the umpteenth time, I'm carrying it down. Now, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Even if you use one of the other two possibilities, you now need to take the cosine here and distribute. What is cosine theta times cosine squared theta? Cosine cubed theta. It's just like saying what's x squared times x, except we're talking in terms of cosines. Minus what's sine squared times cosine? Sine squared theta, cosine theta. Minus what's 2 sine theta cosine theta times sine theta? Two, 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 two. 2 sine squared theta cosine theta. There is one last cleanup step. I have a sine theta cosine theta term. Do I have any other sine cosine terms? Yeah. Can you take away one of those? Mm, I don't have any that are just sine cosine. Changes factor. No. Mm. We just multiplied out. We don't want to factor anything. So do I have any other terms that are just sine cosine? In other words, no squares. Do I have any other terms that are just a cosine cubed? No. Do I have any other terms that involve a sine squared and cosine? Yes. Yes, because this is also here a sine squared and cosine. In my morning class, we had it, one of them was switched, I don't know which, but we had it cosine sine squared with one of them. Doesn't matter the order, but if there's a term that's a sine squared and a cosine, they're like terms. So, I'm going to write my answer one more time. Mm -hmm. 2 sine theta cosine theta just carries down. Cosine cubed theta carries down. Now, I have a minus sine squared cosine, and that's a minus what? This is a minus 1 sine squared cosine, minus 2 sine squared cosine. So minus 1 sine squared cosine minus 2 sine squared cosine is going to be minus 3 sine squared theta cosine theta. This 
barring we made no mistakes this period, should be one of your answer possibilities. Okay. Um, well, you're done when there's no more two thetas or three thetas. And then, like two rows ago, we had no more two thetas or three thetas. But you need to do your multiplying, like multiply things together to see if there's like terms. Because there will sometimes be like terms, which is what happened here. Okay. 14 is going to be a similar type situation where you have to use, you have to break that three apart. Now, in my remaining time, we need to go grab a problem from 39 through 42. Do I get to pick? I see. Are they all good problems to do? 42. I was going to pick 42. We're going to have to move because I want to make sure we don't get caught here. I don't think we will, but sine to the fifth x, this is a proof, right? It says to use the power reducing identities to prove the identity. So we're beginning with sine to the fifth, and my goal is to end up with one eighth sine x times whatever that other piece is. Three minus 4 cosine 2x plus cosine 4x. That's my goal. Now, hint 1, it told us to use power reducing identities. Hint 2, this is a lot like yesterday when we, we had cosine to the fourth in homework. Right? We only have power reducing identities for sine squared. So what, how should we break that sine to the fifth up? Yep. Now I'm going to write mine as sine, I put my sine first, sine squared x and sine squared x. So I wrote it as sine, as in sine to the first, times sine squared times sine squared. And honestly, that sine to the first x is just going to carry down the entire length of the problem, which is why I put it out front, because I don't want to lose it. So sine x, as I said, carries down. Sine squared x, power reducing, right? 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. What's sine squared again? 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. This is just like yesterday, right? Except I have an extra sine x out front, and we're trying to prove it. We know what the answer is supposed to look like. Guess what I'm going to say about this sine x? Carry it down. How do I multiply the fractions? We're going to foil the tops, aren't we? And this should sound very familiar to what we did yesterday, guys. 1 times 1 is 1. Outsides, 1 times negative, two, negative cosine 2x, which is negative cosine 2x. Insides, 1 times negative cosine 2x. So what's negative 1 cosine 2x and negative 1 cosine 2x? Negative 2 cosine 2x. And what's negative cosine 2x times negative cosine 2x? Plus cosine squared. Plus cosine squared 2x. All over? 2 times 2 is 4. I would encourage us to follow the same steps from yesterday. Okay. Now, as we check, it said to use the power-reducing identities. Notice 
there's still a square here, yes? Are there any squares in my answer? No, the whole point is we're going to have to get rid of these squares. So this is my problem child right there. You remember yesterday how we used the power reducing identity again? That's what we're going to do. Now keep in mind, this is cosine squared 2x. So remember that 2x is in the position of u. Okay. Now, sine x out front is staying out front. Like yesterday, I'm going to take this and break this into three individual fractions. Denominator of 4, well, 1 divided by 4 is going to be 1 fourth. Minus, now it's 2 over 4 cosine 2x. But we know 2 over 4, 2 fourths is 1 half cosine 2x. Plus, coefficient in front of cosine squared 2x is 1. So in terms of coefficient, this is going to be 1 over 4, 1 fourth. And then... Do you remember how yesterday I switched out the cosine square? So this is where cosine squared 2x, the identity for cosine squared, the power reducing identity is 1 plus cosine of 2u. What's in place of u? 2x all over 2. What? Yes, it is going to be 4x. Mm -hmm. I will have that in my next step. Okay, sine x out front. Stay sine x out front. And I'm going to, for the moment, just copy down my 1 fourth minus my 1 half cosine 2x. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to distribute my 1 fourth yet. I'm going to take what I have here in orange and break it into my fractions. One over two is one half. Plus, this is a one cosine four x over two is going to make this one half cosine 4x. Sine x is carrying down out front again, yes? And what do I need to go back and do with this 1 fourth? Distribute the 1 fourth. So we're keeping this, the first 1 fourth, Minus 1 half cosine 2x. We're just carrying those down for the moment. Plus 1 fourth times 1 half is going to be 1 eighth. Plus. Now when you do this, it's 1 fourth times 1 half cosine 4x is all one term. So 1 fourth times 1 half cosine 4x is going to be 1 eighth cosine 4x. Like terms, 1 fourth and 1 eighth can add together. So carrying down the sine x again. What is 1 fourth plus 1 eighth? It's 2, four, or two eighths plus 1 eighth, which is 3 eighths. Still minus 1 half cosine 2x, still plus 1 eighth cosine 4x. We're there. Last step, guys. Bear with me, please. We already have the sine x out front, right? Remember yesterday how I was teaching you have to factor out that denominator? It's a denominator of what we're factoring out? Eight. Eight. 
So when I factor out a 1 eighth, well, 3 eighths, we factor out the 1 eighth, we're left with 3 minus 1 half. Well, what do we know about 1 half? It's 4 eighths. 4 eighths, factor out the eighth is 4 cosine 2x plus factor out the eighth and it's cosine 4x. Guys, I count that as done. Do you see the pieces? Sine x and 1 8. Flip-flop those and we're there, aren't we? Do my parentheses match? Yes. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I have checked this homework, have I? I am hopeful you have the necessary information to fix the big gaps on this homework. So I originally said no homework over the weekend. Sorry. Anything that needs fixing. Fix over the weekend. I will check it Monday before I start teaching the next lesson. Sound good?